Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Welcome back. And um, the um, Bible reading session was for Nigeria. Now this is for you. But it's still for Nigeria because when it's well with the populace, it is well with the nation. When it's well, not sorry, not with the populace. When it's well with the leadership, it's well with the nation. That's why the Bible says, I've seen an error, an evil proceeding from the leadership. Princes are walking and servants are riding on horses. The Bible calls it an error from leadership. So, but all the same, it's also important that your life is on course, you're blessed, you're fruitful, you're increasing in the things of God, you're increasing naturally, physically, and uh, the tokens of God's blessings are clearly seen in your life. And I believe when that is happening, it's also going to be uh, impactful on our nation. If people are not well, the nation itself will be sick. So this is also for you and I. And um, we're looking at Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, I'll be reading from verse um, 5 to 6. It's a very familiar passage of scripture. And um, I'm sure um, you could probably even read it by heart. It says, Proverbs chapter 3, from verse 5 to 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't depend on your own wisdom or your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God. Then he will tell you which way to go. Let me repeat it and paraphrase it again. It says, trust God absolutely and totally. Don't depend on the plans you have done for yourself and how you have earmarked your life what time you will do what, and what you will do. Leave room for God to obstruct your plans, knowing that his own is more sure, more reliable, and more profitable than yours. Simply give room to God in your plans. So don't be rigid. Uh, there's a part of Scripture, Psalm 37, verse 4. He says that... Um, be pliable, it says that uh, be pliable in the hands of God and delight yourself in the Lord. That word delight means be pliable, be malleable. Don't say this is how I'm going to do it. I'm through with this, I'm done with No, no, don't do all that. When it comes to God, you can't do that. Say be pliable in the hands of God and there is nothing in life you want. Even if it has not been created, it will create it for your sake. Be pliable in the hands of God and it will grant you the desires of your heart whether they exist or not. So he's saying trust God, give room to God. That doesn't mean you don't have your own plans. You can say I'm going to school in the United States but he's saying leave room paraventure. God wants you to school in Ghana <laughs> and then you say no it must be this. No, no, no. He says, give room to God to bring his own plans and nullify your own plans and allow his own plans to have its way in your life, knowing that his own plans will work out profit guaranteed in your life. Now, um, I'll look at a few other scriptures also in... Um, Psalm 115, Psalm 115. Now, uh, Psalm 115, verse um, 9 to 15. From verse 9 to 15, he says, O Israel, or you can say, O your name, you can put your name, your um your business, your family. Say, trust thou in the Lord. He is your help and your shield. 
O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord is your help and your shield. You that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord is your help and your shield. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel and he will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear him, both small and great. The Lord will increase you and I pray and I prophesy that into your life. As you're watching, the Lord will increase you more and more, you and your children. But you say, I'm yet to have children. I decree and I prophesy. The Lord will increase you more and more, you and your children. Ye are the blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. So he's saying here again, you need to trust God to experience lasting increase. Not short increase where you can be extradited from where you are lounging. That's not the increase I'm talking about. The increase that comes from God which make rich and add no sorrow. He said, trust God. He will increase you more and more. Meaning it never stops. As he increases your capacity to manage it, he brings the increase. He increases your capacity to manage it, he brings the increase and it continues endless. Now, God is calling the church to trust him. In the days we are in, we have to trust God, depend absolutely on God for direction. In Psalm 32 verse 8, he said, I will instruct thee in the way you should go. I will guide thee with your eye. I will teach thee what to do. So God is saying, when you trust me, I will help you navigate. The terrain is getting the days are evil and we are in an evil day. And that's why I was reading, was it on uh, uh, today, this morning news, another kidnapping in Lokoja somewhere, kidnapping here, a rape of children, mo uh, uh, molestation. It's endless. It keeps going. The corona is there. There are those who are sick. So many people are sick, have been to the hospitals. They are filled up. Somebody went to the hospital, couldn't have a bed for four days all filled up, choked. Everywhere it's the hand of Satan is everywhere. And you need God to navigate you successfully. The Bible says there's a trap, the enemy says, and it is in vain does the enemy set a trap in the presence of a bird. So if a bird is watching you set a trap for it, it will just fly away. Now God knows where all those booboo traps are. And so he's telling you, trust me so that I can navigate you so that you will not fall into those traps. Traps of sicknesses, Traps of kidnapping, traps of death, traps of financial mishap, all sorts of traps, they are everywhere. Now, we must trust God in this day and age because it's the only way to navigate successfully the course of life. Now, I want to give you a few reasons why you must trust God. Then I will come to what to do to trust God. Now, you must trust God because of the following reasons. Then later on, will look at what it means to trust God. Because like I said, I've seen people say, oh, I have faith in God. Oh, I have faith in God. Only to find out that they didn't have faith in God. They didn't know what it means to trust God. The parameters that must be seen in your life to prove that you trust God. If those parameters are not there, then you don't trust God. For example, um, in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, it says, you should not have doubt in your heart. And some people say, I don't doubt. I don't have doubt. But to be afraid is doubt. Jesus said to Peter, why did you doubt? How come you are afraid? And you pick people who are afraid, that means it's doubt. But they tell you they don't have doubt. But they're just slightly scared. No, that scared is doubt. If there's no doubt, doubt can manifest as being scared. Doubt can manifest as complaining. I'm just tired. I don't know why these people just behave. And I tried. I don't know. I'm just tired, but... I don't know, but I won't give up all the same. That complaining is doubt. And that is enough to stop the hand of God in someone's life. So people need to know what it means to trust God. But first, I want to give you a few reasons why you have no choice but to trust God. Number one, God is mindful of you. God is mindful of us. We must trust God because 
God, now, I, I, I've checked and I've found out that people plan, they build houses, and build, I, I remember I was with an elderly woman, she has a big company, she said, it's because of the children we're doing all this, so she doesn't need it. She's planning for her children. I'm not sure she's really planning for her grandchildren, but she's planning for her children. Some plan for their grandchildren. Some even can include it in their will. But I doubt if anyone plans for their great-grandchildren. God plans 800 years ahead of you. 800 years. In Genesis 15, he called Abraham. He said, Abraham. Abraham said, oh God, what will you do? You give me, see, I, I'm yet to have a child. And God said, Abraham, in 400 years' time, I have planned. You need to trust me, Abraham. I have planned for your fourth generation to leave this place. They will go to a land called Egypt that is not theirs. Then they'll be afflicted another 400 years. After 800 years from now, I will bring your lineage back to this place to inherit this place. Wow, I don't know any human being that can plan 800 years ahead. That's why you must trust God. The Bible says that God has his mind full of us. He's thinking of us in Psalm, in Psalm 8. He says that, Lord, when I consider the heavens, the moon, the stars that you have ordained, what is man that you are so mindful of him? Meaning, the activity in the galaxy is enough to take God's attention off even the earth. But God's attention is not taken off. God's attention is on you. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, he says, My thoughts towards you are not of evil, but of good and of peace to bring you to an expected end. So the end God is thinking of is not just now. He's thinking of till 800 years. So when he says, trust me, you need to trust him. Why? Because you cannot plan beyond 100 years. He can plan 800 years ahead of you. He said, Abraham, I have designed Levi, your fourth generation as a priest. I have designed, my goodness, I have prepared a man who will lead my children back 800 years. He's your lineage, he's your great-grandson. He will receive them in Egypt. His name is Joseph. He's going to be the leader in a foreign land. He will receive your, your lineage in Egypt. I have prepared 800 years a man called Moses. He's coming. He will bring them out of Egypt. I know what they will do to try and stop them. So I know what I've infused in him to make sure that is sorted out. So he said, Abraham, trust me. You need to trust me. Because I think deeper about your life than you can think about yourself. And it's one of the reasons why we must trust God. And that's why that Psalm 40, verse 5 says, Many, O Lord, are your wonderful works which you have done and your thoughts towards us word. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Now, the Bible says the thoughts of God towards us cannot be numbered. Now, those thoughts are of peace and of no evil. Do you know that it is rare for a human being to live for 70 years and not at one time entertain a negative thought for himself. You know, there are people who even wish evil for themselves sometimes. So I just wish that when this man comes, that somebody just catch this car so that we can't go, so that he will know that, so that he will not be able to go on that journey. You even wish your car is small scratch, so that you can't travel on a journey you don't want to go. People wish to be slightly sick, so that they don't do certain things. Those are evil thoughts of yourself. God has never thought one evil thought. And his thoughts towards you in Psalm 139 says that if, now we need to look at this. Now this is mind boggling. Psalm 139, I read verse 17. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them, verse 18. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. Meaning, God has over, now if we look at the sand, let's not count all the sand in the world, that's out of order. Let's look at the seashore, the beach. Just take a drum, fill it with sand, and count the number of particles you have. It's more than a trillion. Meaning, God has more than a trillion thoughts towards you, and not one is evil. And all those trillion thoughts are thinking of navigating you to an expected end. 
My goodness. You can't even think of 20 ways to navigate yourself to the expected end. God has a trillion thoughts of how to get you to the expected end. Then it's time to stop being rigid and allow God have his way in your life. Trust God. Why? His thoughts towards you are beyond comprehension. They are good. They are not evil. They are trillions in number. And each one has no evil thought. Each one is peaceful. And each one guarantees an end for you. And they are over a trillion. You cannot beat that in this life. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. Another reason why we must trust God. You know, in Matthew 6, there's, a, there's a, um, an emphatic statement there, Matthew chapter 6, and it says something. And if you're there today and you have any issue that is beyond you in this life, then trust God. In verse 25 from Matthew chapter 6, Matthew 6 from verse 25. He said, take no thought for your life. What you will eat, what you will drink, and for your body, what you will put on. For life is more than meat, and the body more than raiment. He said, behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bands. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. You are much more important than all the fowls of the air in the world put together. And if he takes care of fowls, then you definitely will be taken care of. Now, if something that is not as important as you, God doesn't fail it, then how much more you? Then he went further. 27. Which of you, by paraphrase, by worrying, can add one second to his lifespan. Which of you, why worry about clothes? Take note of the fields and the lilies on the field, how they grow. They don't even work. They don't have no skill. Yet, even Solomon in all his glory, what God decorated them with, Solomon could not match it. And these are plants that grow today and are caught and are thrown into the oven tomorrow. That means Solomon's wisdom, what he amassed for himself, if you trust God, the wisdom he will give to you will far exceed Solomon's wisdom because he said Solomon's wisdom, as mighty as it was, could not surpass the lilies of the field in glory. Now he says, if you trust me, that's God. He will give you a wisdom that you will gather more than Solomon. The problem is people are not trusting God. They don't trust God and that's why we have not found the greatest than Solomon all over the place. We just have a few handful, just a few handful. But it shows the expected end God has, which is greater than Solomon. Because he said, the glory God has for you in the book of James is not that the glory of the field which appears today and tomorrow disappears. It's a lasting glory. Now the glory of the plant is temporary. It appears today, tomorrow it is cut down. Now he said Solomon in all his glory still couldn't match those plants. And God will not give you the glory now that will be cut down tomorrow. So he's saying, trust me. So I can give you the wisdom that can amass a glory that surpasses Solomon in all ramification. And that's not enough. He went on to say in verse 30, Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is temporary, 
and is cast into the oven, then he will clothe you much more who is permanent. Now I'll back up again to verse 27. Which of you by worrying can add a second to his lifespan? Can you increase your lifespan? God must teach you how to. On yourself you cannot. Whatever you cannot do by yourself, hand it over to God. He says, casting all your cares upon this. You mustn't, there is no room to give up. There's no room to cast off strength. There's no, listen, Sarah had a child at 90. If you're 89, you're yet to, even if you're dying, believe you still have children. It's better you die believing than you live doubting. And let God reckon it to you that you died in faith believing. Sarah, I, I don't know how old Elizabeth was, and if you look at Luke 18, the Bible says this is the kind of faith God is coming for in the last days. Those who will never give up. Don't give up. If you've tried it 10 times, it didn't work. Don't still give up. I remember a lady told me, she said she had a miscarriage 13 times. She's a proud mother of three lovely children. 13 miscarriages. She didn't give up. She still went ahead and had her children. Don't give up. God has not given up on you. God will never give up on you. So don't give up on God because he is with you to take you through to the expected end. But he says, sometimes you have to give up. That's your rigid plan and let him take you through through his own plan that is guaranteed to work. Amen. So one of the reasons why we must trust God is that we are not guaranteed and sure that ours will work. But there's a guarantee that his will work. First, he's mindful of us. His plans work. And if you can solve it, then let him handle it. There are things that are beyond you. Let him handle it. We have seen in the political terrain people who did not campaign, who did not spend money on election, whose name did not appear on the ballot, who only campaigned for primaries, and the Supreme Court made them governors. And they entered. Don't give up on God. Please don't give up. Don't give up. Amen. Don't contemplate suicide. It's not in the times of even considerations at all. No matter what, your problem cannot be worse than that of Job. If he had hope, trusting God, he said, I know my Redeemer liveth. And for that purpose, as bad as this case is, I will bounce back. You don't just know. You know that you know that you know God live. And Christ Jesus reign supreme in heaven and on earth through you. You will bounce back. So trust God absolutely. Say, I'm old. Listen, Joseph made it young, 30. David made it young, 30. Moses made it old, 80. Abraham made it old, 70. It makes no difference. Make it. Make it before God and make it before man. Amen. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Now, another reason why you need to trust God is that it is a command for you to trust God. Now, our main text, Proverbs 3, let me start again. Another reason why you need to trust God is that it is a command. In Proverbs 3, it is not a suggestion, it is an instruction. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Now, there are cases where we have commands in the scripture, and there are cases where we have um, suggestions. Whosoever shall say, that is not a command, that is an instruction for who is willing. You may or you may not. Whosoever. Where there is no whosoever, and they say, trust God, that's a command. So the Bible is saying, trust God. Now, if we look at um, Jeremiah, chapter 17 it gives you little options of not trusting God because it tells you if you don't trust God you are going to be in serious trouble now in Jeremiah chapter 17 I read from verse 5 thus saith the Lord cursed who is cursed be the man that trusted in man and maketh flesh the ways of man, 
his arm or his strength, whose heart departed from the Lord. He shall be like a hearth in the desert. He shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit patched places in the wilderness, in a salt land and not inhabited. Then he went on to say, Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. Whose hope the Lord is. Verse 8. He shall be as a tree planted by the waters, that spread out our roots by the river, and shall not see when he comes. Meaning, he will not know the times of inflation or hardship. But her leaves shall be green, ever fruitful, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, but shall always make profit at all times. Meaning, his life will not be regulated by seasons. His life will be regulated. You know, in Isaiah 61, he says, The sun shall no more be thy light by day, neither the moon for night. He said, The glory of God shall be your light. Meaning, there will be no seasons in your life. There are some people, their businesses is seasonal. Some, when it rains, that's when they make money. Some, when it's dry, that's when they make money. Some, is December, that's when they make money. Some is match all sorts. It says when you trust God, your life and your business will no longer be seasonal. It will be all year fruitful. Because the Lord will be your light. He will be your rain. He will be your day. He will be your night. Amen. He now went on to what? So it's a command. Cursed is the man that does not trust God. So you don't actually have an option but to trust God. Otherwise, the word curse means empowered to retrogress and not prosper in life. The word blessed means empowered and endued with grace to prosper, to move forward and be profitable in life. The word curse means empowered. This test and then there's an anointing to make that person retrogressive and not make it in life. So, we have no choice but to trust God. Amen. And you will trust God. And my prayer for you, you will be fruitful all year round. You know, in this lockdown, some have made so much money legitimately, not even scamming, legitimately. Some have made money and some have not made money. But your life won't even be regulated and your profit and your target will not be affected by the coronavirus. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.